Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. Today we will be learning about the basics of units of measurement and we will also learn the differences between fundamental and derived units. The most important concept is that every physical quantity you've ever heard of can be represented and in fact needs to be represented as a numerical value times the unit chosen. So for example, when you say to somebody that the mass of an object is 15 kilograms, what you are really saying is that the mass of the object is 15 times the mass of 1 kilogram. Now this statement will only make sense to the other person if they know the mass of 1 kilogram. So the first property of a unit it is, is that it has to be standard, it has to be available to everybody throughout the world so that we can freely communicate our information. So, there are many examples for this. You might say to somebody that you will be studying for two hours. What you really mean is that you will be studying for two times the duration of one hour. This will only make sense to the other person if they know the duration of one hour and from that they will be able to calculate the duration of two hours. You could say to a person that the distance between point A and point B is six miles. And what that means is that the distance is six times the length of one mile. Or when you buy a computer with a hard drive capacity of 256 gigabytes, what that means is it's a capacity of 256 times the size of one gigabyte. An important concept here is that the numerical value is inversely proportional to the size of the unit. As the size of the unit decreases, the numerical value correspondingly increases. So let me illustrate that with an example. I am going to try to describe the area of a box in terms of three different systems of units. So this is the box. First of all I can write the area of the box as one big box. If we agree that the area of this object is equal to one big box then this statement is obviously true. We define this whole object to be a big box and the area is equal to one big box. I could divide this area into four equal smaller areas and call each of these areas as one medium box. So this would be one medium box. And since there are four of them inside this, the size would also be equal to the size of four medium boxes. Now keep in mind these two quantities are equal. One big box is equal to four medium boxes. Right. I could also divide a medium box further into four small boxes. So this would be a small box there. Sorry. And I can see that there are four small boxes in a medium box and four medium boxes in a big box. So the area can also be written as the area of 16 four times four small boxes. So, we see that the biggest unit is a big box and the biggest unit has the smallest numerical value corresponding to that unit. As the size of the unit decreases, the numerical value corresponding to that unit increases. Now, this is not strictly a product between a numerical value and a unit because two numbers are not being multiplied, but you can think of it as a product for the time being. So, we know that big box is greater than a medium box. which is greater than a small box. So a big box is greater than a medium box and a medium box is greater than a small box. Since 1 times a big box is equal to 4 times the medium box and a big box is greater than a medium box, it makes sense to say that 1 is less than 4 which is obvious. So we can derive and we can logically see as well that 1 is less than 4 is less than 16. So we see that the smallest unit has the biggest numerical value associated with that unit. As the size of the unit decreases, the numerical value corresponding to that unit increases. Another way to say is this, let's say I am trying to describe the mass of an object in terms of human beings or cars. And I say the mass of the object is the same as the mass of X humans. And it is also the same as the mass of Y cars. 
So the first thing to note is there is an equal to sign between them. X humans, the mass of X humans is the same as the mass of the object which is the same as the mass of Y cars. Now we know that the mass of a car has to be more than the mass of a human. Therefore to equate the same masses we would need more human beings than we would need cars. So from this we can logically derive that X has to be greater than Y. So for example if the mass of an object is equal to the mass of 5 cars then it's probably equal to the mass of 50 humans. So x in this case is 50 and y is 5 and we can see that x is greater than y. So this is the first important concept that as the numerical value increases, the size of the unit decreases and vice versa. There are three basic types of units. Base units. These units you can think of as elements. These are the basic building blocks and there are a limited number of them and these can be used to form other units. There is a separate category of supplementary units which can also be used to make derived units but they do not really qualify as units because they do not depend on any of our choices. I will explain them in a second. The third and most important category is derived units. If you think of base units as elements, you should think of derived units as compounds which can be formed by joining base units and in some cases supplementary units. So using base and supplementary units we can form in the derived units for any physical quantity you've ever heard, no matter how complicated it is. Base units, by the way, are also called fundamental units. Before discussing the three types of units in details, let's take a look at the different systems of units. Because of geographical and historical reasons, in many different places throughout the world, many different systems of units have been used. One of the most familiar ones to you probably is the MKS system or the meter kilogram second system. In this system, the standard unit for the physical quantity length is taken as 1 meter, the standard unit for the physical quantity mass is taken as 1 kilogram and for time is taken as 1 second. There are many other base quantities or fundamental quantities as well which we will see in a moment but these three are the most important and for the first half of the 11th grade these three are only the quantities which you are going to be dealing with mass, length and time. There is another system of units called the CGS system of units in which the standard unit for length is taken as 1 centimeter, the standard unit for mass is taken as 1 gram and the standard unit for time is the same, it is 1 second. However, the system of units which we will study in most detail is the SI system of unit or the international standard system of units. It is the most widely used system throughout the world among scientists and engineers. Now it's SI system instead of IS system since SI is abbreviated from the French version of international standard, not the original English. So, in the SI system of units, there are a total of 7 fundamental units and 2 supplementary units. And using these, we can form the, the units for any derived quantity of interest, no matter how complicated it is. The first three you've already seen and you probably are familiar with. Length has the standard unit meter and the symbol M. Mass has the standard unit kilogram and the symbol kg. Time has the standard unit second and the symbol s. These three are the same as in the MKS system. Electric current you will study in more detail once you reach electrodynamics. But for now the definition of current you have seen from household appliances will do. It has a unit of ampere and a symbol of A. Temperature is another physical quantity I am sure you are familiar with though the units might not be as familiar. You have probably seen units of centigrade and Fahrenheit. But for scientists, the most natural unit is Kelvin because it has a linear relationship to energy. We will discuss that in detail once we reach thermodynamics. Luminous intensity is the odd one out because it is the unit which you will not really deal with in 11th and 12th grade. But I tell you what it basically is. It has to do with the, the way the eye perceives light, not light itself. So for example, if I shine light of the same intensity to you and it's either yellow or red, Light of red, or light of yellow color would seem to be brighter to us, even though they both are of the same intensity. That's because of the way the eye perceives light, and candela is associated with that physical property. Amount of substance is a quantity which you will see very soon, and it is a macroscopic form of a molecule or an atom. It is basically a collection of a huge number of molecules or atoms whose value is equal to six into ten to the power twenty-three. That is approximately six followed by 23 is 0, so it's a very very big number. The two supplementary units are plane angle and solid angle and they have the units radian and steradian. So let's talk about them a little bit. 
plane angle is something you've probably seen before and it is defined as the angle between two line segments so the radius is r let's say the length of this curved surface is curved part is l the angle theta is defined as the ratio of the length by the radius and its unit is radians Now, radians is not a unit which you've probably seen. So the unit which is which you are more familiar with would probably be degrees. And the conversion between them is something which you should remember. And that is that pi radians equals 180 degrees. And you know that 180 degrees is the angle subtended by a straight line. Right? Which is equal to pi radians. No. An interesting thing is that it doesn't really matter what the radius is. We could take the radius to be smaller or we could take the radius to be larger. And in both cases, L would correspondingly increase such that the ratio of L and R remains the same. Another thing to note is that L and R are both same, the same physical quantity which is length. So if for example L is equal to 4 meters and R is 2 meters, then theta will be equal to 2. Now, if L is 4 kilometers and R is 2 kilometers, theta will still be 2. So, though theta does have a unit radian, it is not a unit in the usual sense because it does not really depend on any of our choices. It has a particular value independent of our choices of base units. So, that's why it's put into a separate category called supplementary units. And solid angle is nothing but an extension of plane angle in three dimensions. So a plane angle is an angle between two line segments. A solid angle you can view sort of like in a three dimensional ice cream cone. And just like a plane angle is generally represented by theta, solid angle is generally represented by omega. And this definition of solid angle is also quite similar. That is that we take a length r, a radius and the vertex of the cone as the center and instead of drawing an arc we now draw a sphere or at least a part of the sphere which is subtended between these two lines and we take the curved surface area of that sphere a and omega is defined as a by r square this has the same remarkable property uh, the sorry the units is ceridian this has the same remarkable property that the area and the radius change accordingly. If we increase the radius, the area will correspondingly increase and the solid angle will remain the same. So we could take this area, we could take this area, we could take any area and the ratio of area and the square of the radius will be the same. Another thing to note is that if we are measuring radius in meters and area in meters square, again, the ratio of these does not really depend on our choice. It is a particular number. And so radian and steradian both are put into a special category of supplementary units. They are not really base units, but they are not derived from the base units either. Okay. So they fall into a separate category of supplementary units. Okay. Derived units are the most interesting ones and they can be formed by the multiplication or appropriate division of base units and supplementary units. For example, area can be measured in many units, some of them might be square meters or acres. Square meters would be the standard unit for area in the SI system, since in the SI system the standard unit for length is meters. Speed is distance upon time, so if you are measuring everything in the SI system as we most likely will be, then the standard unit for length is meter and the standard unit for time is second, so the standard unit of speed would be meters per second. Or we could also use other systems of unit, for example, you probably could be familiar with miles per hour. The standard unit for force would be 1 kilogram meter per second square. Right, if you are not familiar with force yet, don't worry, we will soon be. But the standard unit in the SI system, 1 kilogram meter per second square is what is called 1 Newton. And similarly, for the standard unit for work is 1 kilogram meter squared per second squared and that is given the name 1 Joule. Angular speed is the odd one out because it is the, the first four are created simply by using base units. But angular speed is measured in revolutions per minute and revolutions is a measure of the angle which an object has moved. 
so angular speed is made by using revolutions which is a plane angle and minute which is time so it is using both supplementary units and fundamental units now let's forget the units for a minute we've done as much as we could in units let's focus on the numerical value for a second because in physics the numerical values take vast extremes we can talk about the size of a galaxy or we can talk about the size of an atom we could talk about the time it takes for the universe to be created which is of the order of billions of years or we could talk about the time it takes for an electron to move from one position to another in an atom which is a very very small time so instead of writing all the zeros and all the decimal places on the time we've come up with a neat system which is we always write the system of units in the powers of 10 method so in this case we represent the numerical value forget the unit now we're focusing on the numerical value as a multiplied by 10 to the power b and you've already seen an example of this when i talked about the value of one mole being 6 multiplied by 10 to the power 23 now you can see this is very beneficial because we can't always write 6 and then 23 zeros after it okay it, a much better way would be just to simply write 6 multiplied by 10 to the power of 23 here a would be 6 and b would be 23 the standard convention is that a is taken to be between 1 and 10 it could be 1 but not 10 so for example the number 1000 would be written, written as 1 into 10 to the power 3 and not 10 into 10 to the power 2 once we've written a number in the powers of 10 method there's another very nice property which is which we use which is the order of magnitude the order of magnitude of the number is b if a is between 1 and 5 it could be 5 it could be 1 and b plus 1 if a is between 5 and 10 so let's make this a little bit clear let's say uh, let's order of magnitude is basically rounding off a number to the nearest power of 10 so let's say we have a number 1.4 into 10 to the power 7 if we were to round it off to the nearest power of 7 the nearest power of 10 it would be 1 into 10 to the power 7 which would be 10 to the power 7 so the order of magnitude would be 7 which is b b if a is less than or equal to 5 in this case a is 1.4 however if the number is 9.4 into 10 to the power 7 then a better way to round it off would be as 10 into 10 to the power 7 because 9.4 is closer to 10 then it is to 1 which becomes 10 to the power 8 so in this case the order of magnitude should be 8 and this is the reason when a is between 1 and 5 we take the order of magnitude as b but if a is closer to 10 that is it is between 5 and 10 we increase 1 in the order of magnitude now the last thing which you need to know is there are certain standard prefixes which we use to describe our physical quantities and some of these you might be familiar with for example a kilo we see that a kilo is 10 to the power 3 so a kilometer we know which we already knew is 10 to the power 3 meters or 1000 meters a nano is 10 to the power minus 9 so when somebody tells you that an event occurs in 4 nanoseconds it means that the event occurs in 4 into 10 to the power minus 9 seconds right some of these you've seen before some of these you've never seen like femto and ato because no realistic practical event occurs in these time scales femto is 10 to the power minus 15 that's a femto second it is approximately a time scale for atomic processes on an atom so it's not something which you see in your daily life nee. the next time we're going to start another concept called dimensional analysis which is going to extend whatever we've learned today i hope whatever has been said today has become clear to you thank you